Eric Granados was born in El Salvador and moved with his family to East Palo Alto when he was two. After high school, he served four years in the military, which changed him forever. Relatively few of the educators in East Palo Alto grew up there, but Eric decided to return to his home turf to help others going through what he had suffered. He began in special education and went on to direct after-school programs for the Ravenswood City School District. He's now a site director for the Boys and Girls Club, serving hundreds of local youth annually. Most of these kids' families are struggling and need extra help, and Eric is there to offer it. Every day, Eric gives it, quietly, far beyond what is asked of him, out of his own time and often his own pocket. In high school, when school became a struggle, the military came to recruit. Is it safe to say that the military saved you in some ways? Absolutely. I think, um, to me, it was a stepping stone, uh, and it allowed me an opportunity to not just leave my community, but to see it from a different perspective, you know, as, a, as an outsider. What were some of the, what, maybe rude awakenings? Um, being told when to eat, sleep, and just about everything else. But I, I you know, acquired a lot of discipline while I was there. Um, you know, there's accountability for everything. You know, if somebody arrives late to work here, um, nothing happens in the service. You'd be working all day. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. consequences. Um, it's just, just a work ethic, you know, knowing that you're gonna work until they tell you not to work. And you are in the process of passing that mindset on now? Right? Absolutely, trying, you know, not just with uh, the, the children that I work with, but also my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have said that you gravitate to troubled kids. Why is that? Uh, I, I see a lot of myself in a lot of these children, you know. Um, you know, I, I grew up in an abusive household, uh, you know, through, through my father, you know, my sister and I. Um, but it's taken me a lot of years to, to, de to deal with it. Um, you, know, you, you can just see the hurt sometimes, you know. Um, so I always try to be that one person uh, for those kids. Um, so I think for me just, you know, having unconditional love for the students and, and you know, just, just being a loving person. Um, something so simple I think the kids miss out on sometimes, you know. Uh, oftentimes we internalize uh, our feelings, you know. Um, so I tend to let the students just kind of, you know, speak their mind taking the time to have these conversations with the students versus just, uh, you know, trying to be a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. you know. And you do see that working? Absolutely. It's, it's part of building relationships with the students. I think just based on my own background, I, I tend to, you know, really keep, you know, my feelings in check you know, to myself. Um, but I realized that in order to connect with, uh, you know, the students and the families, I, I have to open up myself. And just as I'm sh I've shared with you guys today, uh, you know, about, you know, my personal abuse, when I asked you when we first met what was the most difficult part, you said um, you're being vulnerable. Why is that so hard? I think it's an uncomfortable feeling, you know. Um, you know, I, 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 I like being in control, you know, of, of my own feelings and uh, feeling vulnerable. You have to really open up yourself to, to whatever emotions you're feeling, you know. Um, but I think it's important for, you know, for the students that I work with to, to, to see me, you know, in that capacity. You know. I remember, you know, I've done this for over a decade. Um, early on, I remember students coming to me and hugging me, and um, it was a little awkward for me. I'm like, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do, you know. Um, whereas now, I've, I've, I've embraced it. You know, I have a child who comes to me every day, and it's like she needs her hug, and then I give it to her, and it's just, you know, um, it's interactions like that, like I said, that give me life. And yet, at one point, you almost quit. Why? I think it goes back to, to what I told you about being vulnerable. Um, you know, it takes a toll to, to hear some of the, the struggles that the students go through. And it's not like you go home and forget about it. You know, so um, in that instance, you know, it was just consuming me, you know. Um, so it's really, you know, trying to find an outlet and, and and just acceptance, you know, realizing that um, we can't control everything, we can't fix everything, and just doing the best that you can. Have you ever felt at a loss? I, I can't do anything for this kid. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Then, what, then what do you do? Um, 
I continue trying. You know, I look forward to, to going to work every day, uh, you know, being greeted by the students, you know, shaking their hands and um, you know, hugging the students, whatever it is that, that the students need, you know, and I just feel like working with the students, it just you know, gives me life. Do you know someone who has overcome significant hardship and has an inspiring story to tell? Someone who has sacrificed or given over and above to the community and deserves some recognition? If so, please contact us with your nomination for next year's Local Hero Awards. To find out more about our local heroes and to watch interviews with all the winners, visit our website, midpenmedia.org. At the Midpen Community Media Center, you can make your own videos and television programs and take classes in all aspects of media production. You can also hire our professional services team. To find out more about that, go to mcproservices.com. Congratulations to all our winners, and thank you for watching.